I'm excited to bring up Grant Warnick, who is the CEO of Insight Engines, who's going to show you some amazing examples of innovation built right into it and on top of Splunk. Grant, please join me on stage. That is a perfect entry song for you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know you would choose that. <laughs> That's a good one. So why don't you tell the audience about what problems you're solving with Insight Engines? I'm Grant Warnick, and uh, I build natural language search engines. I've been doing so now for the better half of a decade. And about two years ago, we turned away from doing consumer to focus on this very hard problem, machine-generated data. About right now, about this many people in the organization can query machine data. What if everybody could do it? So you're saying you can use natural language, this English language now, to interact with Splunk? That's exactly right. That's exactly what we're doing. In fact, I'm here today to announce our first product with you guys, Insight Engine CSI, or Cybersecurity Investigator. That is a very clever name. <laughs> I think that press release just went out this morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think it did, too. I think it did, too. I'm excited. Uh, you guys want to see it? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's see it. It is beautiful. OK, OK. Uh, let's roll demo. So this, guys, this looks a lot like Splunk, right? That's because it is Splunk, but with one big change. You don't see SPL going in there. You see natural language. And this is an easy query to start with. What users have made the most changes by action the past four days? And what's happening here in real time is our natural language compiler is pulling apart this phrase running it through, and recombining those words to figure out what you mean by this. And not only generating one Splunk query, but multiple Splunk queries. Check that out, Doug. <laughs> that is awesome. It did that automatically. Yeah, automatically. <laughs> Beginners love using that as a tool to learn Splunk. Advanced people love using that as a shortcut. And up here is search scope. This makes it so non-technical people can actually dig into Splunk and figure out exactly what you're looking at. And since we all think in terms of source types, we've outlined all the source types here. Beautifully outlined. And take one second before we dig deeper into this to think about the benefits to productivity, to accessibility, to onboarding new hires, to expanding your hiring pool. Everything just changed right now. And if we go down this page, you can see all the actionable intelligence you can see here. Changes by action, users. And as you keep going down, you have your table. Because humans, we're really good at looking at things from different perspectives and finding new insights. And anything you want, you can drill down into the raw events, add to watch lists and the ever-powerful security app of Splunk's made. And now, you can even get very specific, like pan traffic to outside the US yesterday. So since we all think in terms of source types, check this out. Now we're just looking at just pan. And take a look at the amount of data that's going into this. That was a fast response time on 162 terabytes. That's because we're running it through the Splunk data models, which is really powerful. You guys haven't checked them out. And if you guys also look here, not in the US, external IPs only, so all your internal IPs are omitted. And we're getting traffic from somewhere where we really don't want to be sending traffic to. Iran. So to dig in deeper, you'd want to do a query to figure this out. And the way you do this query is you do pan traffic yesterday to Iran versus, let's say, some kind of baseline, since we need something to compare it to, so versus August. And Doug, check out those numbers. That, that does not look good. It looks like there's almost as much volume yesterday as the whole month of August. Exactly. And so what would you want to do now? You'd want to use Splunk stats. You'd want to look at standard deviation. You want to look at moving average. You'd want to see everything over comparatively between the two time periods. And we've done that for you here. We scroll down. And there it is. Wow. And check that out, Doug. Is there something wrong? Uh, yeah, it looks like there's a, a little bit of a, a serious aberration in standard deviation there. Exactly. Exactly. There is. <laughs> and when you go That's way above the standard. Exactly. Not a good <laughs> spike. We'd want to check this out. And as a security analyst, you'd want to dig into this. Now, take a step back here. Queries like this, they're complex. And they take a lot of time for your most advanced people to do. Check out this query, Doug. Holy cow. I think that's something even Stephen Sorkin would be proud of to have written. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he would be. <laughs> 
And think about what this is doing to empower everybody to be able to do so much more in the platform. With CSI, you can now spend your time solving complex problems instead of code. It's a brand new revolution, guys, and this is just the start of it. So since we all like doing correlations, it's something we love about Splunk, and it's so powerful because all your data is going into there. So let's do a correlation now. IDS alerts followed by malware. This is the kind of search that we'd want to do, guys, if you had intrusion detections, and then you wanted to figure out what machines were infected afterwards. And right away, you can see we got results very quick. And Doug, check out the number of source types here. Over 20 -ish. Beautiful. Automatically generated. Automatically generated, yeah. Interpreted by your natural language Exactly. Processor. And run through multiple Splunk data models to accelerate it and make it move faster. And if we scroll down the page here, the extensibility of Splunk allows us to do custom visualizations. So what we're doing here is we're allowing you to see in succession your counts of intrusion, followed by your counts of malware, so the trained security analyst in seconds can figure out if something's going wrong on very particular hosts and move forward. That is absolutely beautiful, Grant. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. A product that's making in your most productive people, enabling them to be more productive, enabling them to be more creative, enabling them to hunt more. And a product that's enabling your novices to become ninjas, and a product that potentially has a lot more potential beyond that. And that's me. What I'm thinking as I'm watching the demo is, as you move into vertical applications, use this as a machine data fabric. Start to get into IoT, you're now dealing with operational technology folks that SPL would be even more foreign to. It seems like you could be able to tune this engine using the power of SPL to help them. Exactly, IoT. You think, think about the vision when it comes to like other sides of healthcare or finance even eventually. Awesome. So you've done startups before. You've yes, been in this, long this time. World, world for a while, and you, you came to Splunk. What was it about Splunk that you, had, you could have chosen anything? Open source, lots of alternatives. Why us? It's a really good question. So it really comes down to three things. Uh, one, Splunk's extremely open. It's extensible. It's proven. The second thing is, when we used to build consumer apps, we used to have to build this whole massive data ingestion pipeline. And when we came and learned about Splunk more, you guys handle the processing of your data, so we could really focus on what we're really good at, which is turning human language into actionable insights. And the third thing is really not very obvious. It's the power of this query language, SPL. SPL enables us to do things that just aren't possible on any other platforms. You saw some of those queries a second ago. Yeah. It's just mind-blowingly great. That's, I think everyone would like to see more. If they want to find out more, where, how, how can they get in touch with you? That's a good question. In fact, um, in fact two hours from now. Two hours. <laughs> uh, we're going to be doing right a up. session with Matt Parks from Kaiser Permanente's Cyber Risk Defense Center about how they're using it and how one of the most cutting-edge teams out there is, is doing some amazing things with it. You can also talk to your account teams. All of them are educated on this. And you can go to insight-engines.com. Yes, squatter on the domain, too. <laughs> we'll have to use Splunk to flush those squatters over time. That, that would be great. Awesome work, Grant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. What an innovative person, company, and technology.